How do you bring the top tier of management closer to the workforce? Have you even thought about it? Well, you'd better get used to the idea because it's really part of what leadership today is all about. And that's the topic of a new Harvard Business Review article that calls the phenomenon collaborative leadership. We have with us today one of the co-authors of the article, and she's INSEAD Professor of Organizational Behavior, Herminia Ibarra. Welcome to INSEAD Knowledge. Good morning, Shelley. Why is it important in these days of really virtual teams? A lot of companies just have sort of big virtual teams. Why is it important to have this kind of collaborative leadership? I'll quote uh, one of my favorite people on this topic, and that's a, a woman named Charlotte Beers, who was a former uh, CEO of Ogilvy & Mather, and she was fond of saying collaboration is highly overrated if you don't have the right thing to do. So how do you know what to invest in, what to collaborate on, and with whom? The only way you understand that is by having contacts and feelers and connections and relationships outside your organization because as you know change is always from the outside and that's where good collaborative leadership begins. It begins with having a network that allows you to connect, to connect people from different walks of life, to connect different sectors of the economy, different um, groups, different types of organizations, different types of people. Let's, let's hone in on the description, if we can, of, of collaboration. We know, all right, you have to have a clear, and clear objectives. Uh, you need to have accountability, even though you're including more people. What are some of the other things? Right. So w w what we're trying to talk about here is collaborative leadership and not collaboration per se. We're focused on what's collaborative leadership, which is what kind of leadership allows organizations to identify interesting collaborative opportunities to bring the best talents to those opportunities and to then lead the process so that it gets to an effective result. The first has to do with you as a leader being a connector. If you are stuck in your function, in your group, in your business unit, in your country, and you have no breath of exposure, how can you see what's going out there? How can you see the array of opportunities that might be passing you by? And so, so the first piece is really how do you yourself build a network that allows you to add value collaboratively because you can connect? Mm -hmm. The second piece has to do with how you think about the talent that you bring to the party. And though everybody espouses the great value of diversity, Saying it and doing it are very, very different things. We also see very clearly that leaders who engage talent from the periphery are going to be just much better placed to collaborate. And that periphery could be uh, other geographies, other nationalities. It could be generational, bringing younger people into the discussion. It could be gender diversity. It could be many things. But if you're always working with the same old parties, and it's not even diversity of categories, it's also are you always working with the same usual suspects, or do you mix it up? Those things are absolutely critical for innovation and therefore for collaboration. So once you've got some great ideas and you've got the right talents that you're pulling in for it, then what's the process? A lot of times what happens is collaborations kind of get mired in politics or groups have great ideas but they don't get accepted because the top is divided politically into their turf wars. You have to role model that from the top and be sure that you're able to eliminate those politics. You have to be able to do those things and if you don't have your collaborative potential at the top, it just doesn't happen. Uh, and then the last, uh, uh, we call it showing a strong hand, which might seem uh, not the thing to be recommending in an article on, on collaboration, but collaboration doesn't mean you collaborate on everything. Uh, some, it, collaboration doesn't mean consensus on everything. In fact, consensus can really be harmful to an effective collaboration. You need as a leader to really understand when do you step back, but when do you come back in to make sure that people know who's got decision rights and if you don't get a consensus, what happens and how do you keep it moving so that decisions can be taken in a timely fashion. What are the benefits of collaborative leadership? I mean, either to the bottom line or whatever, because I'm, I'm just to be devil's advocate for, for a second. If you have the buy-in from everybody, I mean, it takes time. Is it worth what looks like could be a loss of efficiency or, or a loss There's of... There's a lot of debate on that. And, and in fact, uh, we just wrote a blog that should be coming out soon that says, is collaboration necessarily slower? 
does it slow you down? Does it have to slow you down? Because for a lot of people, there's this common wisdom that command and control is great when you've got to go fast. And when you've got the luxury of time, you don't have a crisis, you don't have a problem, then you can collaborate infinitely. And it is true that collaboration takes more time, but it's also an error because a lot of times you win time at the outset, but you haven't built the platform for actually faster results on down the line. Um, it's, collaboration is just a given today. It's more a matter of whether you're going to lead it effectively or not. I know, I know of no organizations that are innovating exclusively within the lines of their organization today. Um, I know of no organizations who are not trying to pull together the different functions more effectively, their different geographies more effectively, their different business units more effectively. And so it's, it's just simply a given. Um, and you can do it in ways that are slower or you can do it in ways that are faster. Hopefully what we're recommending is something that allows you to be effective but also timely. It seems that social media, the prevalence of social media in everyone's lives and its incorporation into the business world for whatever reasons is also spurring this move towards collaborative leadership, or even helping to bring it up. I mean, am I yeah. right in that? Or can yeah, you give no, me an that's example? The, that, that's absolutely true. It, it's social media, but it's oh, everything digital. Uh, we are getting uh, results, financial information, for example, um, at a rate that's unprecedented. The data goes straight to your desktop. People don't need to process it. People don't need to meet about it. It just comes funneled directly to you. And so it's, it's really a whole new world in which we work together. Um, what social media is, um, is the, the way in which it's turbocharging it is that people are living on it. That's, it is becoming the way people communicate. It's becoming the way people uh, share information. And so it's creating a set of expectations. If you do this so effectively and so seamlessly in your life, why don't you do it in the organization? And, and it's making obvious some divisions that, um, that are simply getting in the way of greater efficiency. But once you do have it going, how do you keep the conversation kind of on track? Because collaboration could could, and again I'm being devil's advocate, it could disintegrate a little bit into just kind of, hey, as opposed to being a little more focused. So just chit chat rather than... Um, Communication. Yeah. Um, you will get some of that, right? So, you know, part of the reason why it's informal is it's the digital water cooler, so you get some of that chit chat. Uh, but my understanding of um, the way this works in a lot of organizations is you have opinion leaders that just emerge because they're adding value. And, 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 and the great thing about this relative to the water cooler, you know, you might have somebody who has great information, but if you're not in the office next to hers and you don't bump into you the water cooler, it. you don't get it. Mm -hmm. Where Whereas on social media, everybody can see who's contributing, and then you get to like or not like and tag, and then that person gets followers, and it's very, it's very behavior driven. People can see it, and that's that's a great value. You know, so many organizations are able to spot talent that they weren't able to spot before because of social media. It leaves a trace, and I guess it makes the un, unheard voice audible, which yeah. is frequently. A good thing. All right. When is it necessary to keep the management doors shut? I mean, you can't be collaborative about everything, as, as you mentioned before, but when do you keep the door shut? Right. So collaboration doesn't mean full disclosure about everything, right? If you're working on an M&A deal, if you're uh, trying to figure out who the next successor is going to be, there's lots of things that have to be kept confidential, and I don't think collaboration changes a thing to all of that. I think the era of collaboration um, just simply underlines the importance of process and fair process. And even though you may not be able to divulge all the information that you know as a leader, you make people feel that their input is valued, that their input's going to be heard, and that a process that everybody that is transparent and fair is going to be followed. And then we have on the other side the command and control people who were really in favor not too long ago. How do they make the shift? What would your advice be to them? All right. So it's it's funny how often we pronounce that command and control is dead, <laughs> and I think mm. I, <laughs> not sure I think that. rumors are highly <laughs> um, right. Um, 
I think most managers today realize that there's a need for a new playbook and that there's a need for a new style. And we call it collaborative leadership and you can call it other things. But there's going to be a limit to command and control simply because you're working so much more outside the lines of your own group. The big mistake that we see so often is people switch over to a kind of full consensus. All right, you guys decide. And it's a process that's so structured and can be so slow and so ultimately frustrating that it's not really the right substitute for command and control. In terms of um, your overall research into this, what was the overwhelming discovery that, that you made? Is there something that you take away from the article personally that you had written or from your research? I, know, I wouldn't call it a discovery. It was just, just seeing how, um, how critical this is. Um, it, it, and that is the importance of starting with yourself and starting with yourself as a senior manager and as a senior team and role modeling the behavior that you want to see elsewhere and understanding that for a lot of people, um, the biggest barrier to collaboration is political infighting and the extent to which as a leader you can get rid of that or you can signal that it's not acceptable and model that in the way that you do it. And then finally, if you can look into your crystal ball, given all of this, you have command and control, you have collaboration, three to five years, what do you think we're going to be seeing in terms of leadership? I think people are going to get better at it. I, th um, I think that's that is um, that trend is out there. Uh, there was an Economist Intelligence report recently that showed that something like 70% of us are working in virtual teams already. Um, organizations are infinitely more global. Innovation is increasingly happening uh, in the least likely places that one would have expected 10 years ago. Industries are morphing and changing, and and so we're just gonna. We're just going to have to learn it. Um, if we don't learn it, or if we don't know how to learn it, we can turn to our kids and they'll teach us because they're growing up collaborating and very effortlessly. So I think we'll just see more and more of it. The evolution of the species. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Herminia Albara, for being with us on NCAD Knowledge. Thanks, Shelley.